Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to um, explain to you a bit more in detail about the painting that I did on Thursday at art class. You will have seen the art class video that was done at art class. But this is going to tell you more about how we did it and that. So, um... Here it is, it's, uh, I'm not getting it out, um, birch trees in acrylic. So, what we did first was a kind of graduated wash, which didn't work, of light blue down to darker blue. The light blue is phthalo blue with a bit of green added. The darker blue is phthalo blue with a bit of red added to make it darker. So uh, it's supposed to be graduated, but as you can see, <laughs> it comes to an abrupt end here and then starts again. Um, as ac acrylic paint dries very quickly, um, especially when it's thin. So with a wash, it dries quickly and then you can't blend it to make it graduated very well. Anyway, when that was dry, I started on the trees. Now you could map out where your trees were going to be, or you could just do it by eye. But I, I drew out where my, my, my biggest trees were going to be. Then you get your palette knife. And you got white, grey and black on your palette. And you get a little bit of white dotted down in, in part, to separate places on your pattern knife. Then add the grey in one of the separate places on the pattern knife and then the other black and then you scrape it across. So I'm trying to move it, curve it to to um, designate the uh, shape of the tree going around. Like, I think I achieved that effect in parts um, but not quite in others. Uh, um, so I did that tree and that tree and that tree and then I thought I'd put a, a, another thinner tree in try the same technique with that and then I did a few thinner trees with a paintbrush in between just to leave. and and then when that was dry or at least the top bit <laughs> we started on the leaves in pasto using a palette knife and getting a lot of if you could feel it you could feel that it's rough even through even through this cellophane you can feel that it's textured so i put on some yellow first and then i put on some red with a palette knife and i mixed the red with the yellow to make an orange and did the eight again and then mixed some other funny shades the funny shades of green and and I don't know if that's a kind of purpley colour in there somewhere as well. And so then I went over with a bit more yellow because some of the places looked a bit void, devoid of yellow. And some red, there should be a bit more yellow up here I think too. But actually I think the leaves are a bit too bunched up. I should have staggered them out a bit more or put a few staggery down. That's what I did do. At the end, put a few staggered ones at the bottom, like to make it look like they were not just evenly <laughs> distributed. <laughs> um, I, I I thought that um, all the other paintings that other people did were much better than mine. They had a more a more realistic um, arrangement for the leaves, like to a few tangling down and and that. And mine just slopped at the top. <laughs> and one lady just did. The trees and didn't put any leaves on, but she sprinkled some white on with a with a toothbrush to make it look like it was snowing, so it looked like a winter scene, which was very nice. Oh, and uh, Lee brought a new doggy with her today. This one's called Ella. She's a uh, Westie again. She's really really cute, and um, you probably saw her on the uh, on the video. I shot a shot of her under the table, like, and then Lee picked her up in her arms. <laughs> But uh, she's two, and 
they only got her on Friday, the previous Friday. And she got her from Swansea. She used to be a show dog. But they found out that her teeth were, un were un unaligned or something. And so they rejected her. What? She's such adorable. Um, so Lee got her. and She's a bit portly, she says. And she's just on a bit of a diet. And when she first came in, she was on the lead. And she was wandering around the hall, like, you know, sniffing, at, sniffing out the place. And she comes up to me. And she decides to go through my legs. <laughs> and then she comes round, round the other side. And I was getting tangled up in a lead because she's on a lead. And uh, I was killing myself with laughing. It really cheered me up after the taxi was late by five minutes again. And I was worried about the taxi coming. Anyway, the doggy cheered me up. But then afterwards, uh, when it was finished, um, well, this was still wet a bit. So I put, I put the last ones, I put that painting on top of it, on so at the back of it was on top of there so there's any wet paint would go onto the back of that painting rather than all, all in my bag and that and that's helped there's a lot of there's a bit of raised up bits of paint on the back of this one now where it's stuck anyway it was it worked it saved everything else from getting lucky then when i went out to find my taxi which usually is waiting for me and when i'm ready to go back home no taxi. I waited for like 15 minutes, no taxi, so I phoned them up and asked them where he was. <sighs> Can't understand the word the guy was saying because he was an Asian fella. Anyway, the taxi came at about 20 past, nearly 20 past, and the, the lady came out. She was, um, she saw me, um, the taxi arrived, and she said, Oh, you've been waiting a long time today, haven't you? And the taxi man said, How long have you been waiting? I said, Nearly 20 minutes. And he goes, oh, That's not good, is it? <laughs> he was an Asian fella and all. Anyway, I managed to get home. <laughs> oh, but these taxis are stressful. I'm not getting a taxi again. I think I've told you before I'm not getting a taxi again. Um, um, if I can't get a lift or someone to go with me, I'm not bothered on going because taxis are just too stressful and that is my final answer. Okay then. <laughs> so that's the end of this video then. If you enjoyed it, give us a like and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.